Hello, everybody, and welcome to this new episode of the Inventa Future of Customer Success uh, podcast. I'm really excited today to have John Ball. Uh, he is the founder and CTO of uh, PAT, PAT standing for PAT, a company specialized in artificial intelligence. They're, they're going to, they're, and, and John is. It knows a lot about, about the field, right, John? I do, <laughs> and it's great right. to be here. <laughs> All right, that's awesome. So, um, John, um, would, you, would you introduce yourself? Who are you? Sure, yeah. Uh, so, so John Ball, the, uh, the founder of, of uh, Pat Inc. Uh, I've, I've been doing this for a long time. So when, when you um, go, go back to my very beginnings, it, it uh, was probably in the 1970s, I worked on what became the internet at my father's office, he was a, a educational psychologist that worked on Sesame Street. So he did a lot of experiments on me, and that's that's why I think I've taken <laughs> such an interest in <laughs> how people one. learn and uh, and of that language. Yeah, um, but uh, if if you if you um, rewind to like 1983, I was a, a student at Sydney University in Australia, and uh, my professor said the one thing we'll never be able to do is emulate brains, emulate language. And for the first time in my life, that was a that was a challenge, and I was going to prove her wrong, no matter how long it took. Wow. <laughs> so I spent the entire summer in the library reading books on cognitive science, so linguistics, psychology, philosophy, neuroscience, uh, and I, um, after about twenty years, I pretty much solved the problem. I think of how brains work, because when when you think of it, a brain is this big sensory machine. And we, we recognize um, images and sounds and we, we can put, put them all together and we can, we can um, suggest what's going to happen in the future based on our experience. So that's, that's what pattern theory is. Uh, and then from that time, I've focused on the best application I could find for this brain theory to prove that it works well. And that's language. Because when, when we talk, we're using not just the, the visual um, experiences and the auditory experiences, but how all of those combine. And, uh, one of my heroes, Alan Turing, uh, wrote the concept of this imitation model where you can tell if something's intelligent if you can have a conversation with it. And all of my peers today seem to be missing the key point that he made, which is you can talk about anything. So, so when he, he showed that um, you, can, you can have this, this game against a machine and the machine is uh, unknown, whether it's a machine or a person, if you ask questions about chess, it should be able to answer it. And that's not a language challenge that's a knowledge challenge about a different domain completely. So, so that, that's sort of my quick, quick introduction wow, to, wow. to where that's, I am. And I'm happy to elaborate. Amazing. And and if we could just hold off for a second, did you say pa pattern? Is that, is that what, what is, what is that? What does that mean? Oh, pa pattern theory. Yeah. What is pattern? So, what is a pattern? Oh, well, uh, so, so when, when you study what brains can do and what deficits, result in so people with with various kinds of brain damage uh, it, it appears that what the brain is doing is matching patterns uh, you can you can think of a visual pattern as you know you can recognize a car or a person so visual or you can hear the sound of a person and you recognize um, who that is so all, all of these are patterns and the the atom bit comes from the fact that you have to somehow have only one version of every specific pattern in in your life so um, all of my patterns for for you geordie are now going to be all connected together and i'm not going to confuse you with my mother or my dog because they're completely different entities and and i, I can sort of take you through what that looks like in reality um, as wow. we go forward okay so a pattern is an entity or a symbol right sometimes we i would call it right that is matched by a pattern, and that's what you know. This pattern kind of a, kind of word comes from. That's that's amazing. Right, right. And and if, if we look at what people think brains are doing today, uh, we know at the cellular level you've got a neuron, and the neuron has a you know it'll activate or it won't, and then it it has this like statistical property because depending on the weights that it connects to, the other uh, cool. neurons may or may not cool. fire. Yeah. Hey, so, so basically, but, but John, think of it another way. Yes. Oh, <laughs> but just think of it another way. Rather than think of the statistical nature, think of the firing nature, which is a pattern has just been matched. So it's it's a pure symbolic machine, the brain. Uh, it either matches patterns or it doesn't, and they go up in this hierarchy. So that that's what pattern theory leads you to. 
Got it. And you you crack the code. You you're able to put a brain into a computer. That's what you you guys are doing. Yeah. So so the principle is you take that theory and then you apply it to language, which I think is the best use because um, our certainly when I started full time in two thousand and six, if you wanted to get um, uh, visual like a camera or something you were getting this compressed stream which wasn't very easy to manipulate and not brain like uh, or you could get a microphone which is also a compressed stream of sound so none of those were good applications but there's nothing clearer than uh, whether a machine can understand the language or not so that's yeah, what we that's, focused on uh, and you know you've been in that for a long time at invent that we also is exactly the same problem that we tried to solve so so that's, right. uh, that's we're going to have fun today in this, and, and I hope that the audience <laughs> will also appreciate that. Great, I'm so looking forward me, to now it. Now let's talk business. You you are uh, the founder and the CTO of Pat, right? P A T. And I see now, right now that you're talking uh, patterns, I see a pattern here. It's like a related the Pat is related to this pattern theory, right? So so tell exactly. me what is what is uh, P A T? What what do you guys do there? Well, so, so we're looking to provide, uh, I, I, probably the best example is what we're um, about to release in the um, airline industry. So one of the big airline groups came to us with this challenge of uh, make our around the world ticketing system work better. And, and so when, when you think of that, uh, and then you use any of the, the, you know, the three big consortiums in the world, if you use any of those systems, you find that none of them work particularly well. They're all quite difficult to, to get a valid uh, trip booked. And so we, we looked at that problem and over a period of six months uh, iterating with the customer, we found out that there's a very good way to use language to augment that. Hmm. But there was one missing piece. And the missing piece was how do you actually understand the, uh, what, what, what the rules of this particular ticket are? Right? So if you, if you think of it, um, uh, airlines are built on, I'm going to fly from here to there, starting at this time and ending at that time. Yep. Right? So the uh, I'll, I'll just easy, one, right? one more. It's easy from the distance. That's right. However, these tickets are built on uh, regions, so you can fly to Europe, and then you can fly around Europe a couple of times, and then you go to the next country, say um, Northern uh, Americas, North Americas, and then you can fly backwards and forwards a little bit there, and then you have to go in the same direction. That would be counterclockwise to, say. Um, Asia, and then you finish up back in the original place. So that, that's how the rules are built. But that's not a language thing. That's a reasoning thing. Uh, and, and what we did was we, uh, after we got the briefing and we were given six months to solve this problem, and we had this, this concept of a multimodal environment where you would um, see the map of the world, you would say things, and as you're saying them, you would then see it drawn onto the map. So we could always check with the user, how does this look? And, and, and it, it's quite impressive when you, you see it and it's out in probably four weeks now. Uh, oh, I'll, give, I'll, wow. I'll give you the updates. That, yes, <laughs> and, yes. And, and, We're going to be so happy to see that. So you say, hey, I'm in Sydney and I would like to fly to San Francisco next weekend. And then pretty much as if I say that a person would kind of build that map in their head, they would see See, that, that arrow that's exactly what you're going to do so that map is going to be right. physically there wow so basically right. interpreting but, but, what you're saying yes and, and and the thing that's going to give you confidence about using ai of the future is knowing that it understood what you said um I, I've, I've used different devices alexa siri for example and you can say something but you're never sure if it got all of the words or if it's just you know it's left something out and then it does something and you go oh that's not what i expected uh, but if you can have the, the two things in sync, what you're seeing with what you've said, and then the, the machine prompting you, how does this look, then you're going to be much more confident that it's doing what you want. So, so one, one of the things that we um, uh, implemented was this integration between the multimodality of the system and the user. Um, so using language where, um, in, in fact, we, we did a little cheat here because um, our, our system, uh, we wanted to have very simple language so that you okay. can interact Simply and 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 we wanted to emulate what people really do when they're when they're interacting with another person with an agent. So, uh, for example, if you went to a travel agent and said, "I want a round the world ticket," what will that cost? You would probably find the agent would say, "Oh, it's about five thousand dollars, or whatever it is, twelve thousand dollars for um, a uh, business class." And that's that's really quick, and that's great because then you can go and find out 
from your friends when you can go. You're not ready yet to, to go because you don't know who's available. So you, you get your quote and then find your friends and dates and times, and then you can come back and book. And that's what, we, what we've emulated. So in, a, in about um, 10 seconds with this system, you'd give your starting point, it'll give you your estimate for the flight without doing anything extra. And then wow. as you go through and navigate and say, I'm going to these countries. Um, in fact, the, the numbers were, were scary. So the first time I tried it, it took me 45 minutes. I was lost. I got caught in Japan. I couldn't finish it. So 45 minutes to not succeed versus the new system, a couple of minutes to actually succeed. And, wow. and the, the conversation is very natural. So it, it's, pretty, it's pretty exciting. And I think that this next generation system will be the, the type of system that we're going to see lots of in the future for these types of complex interactions. That, that might become a standard. That might become the, the way that uh, the way that we're, for what you say, you will, pref- as, a, as a human, right, as a customer, you will prefer to use that system to a human kind of guessy sort of guy, right? And then and, and, uh, right. uh, at least for that specific task. Yeah, and, and, and in the industry, it's called goal-directed conversation. Mm. Um, and, and what we're, we're exploiting this feature of language, which is that um, it's, it's called focus. So when I ask you a question, uh, where are you leaving from? You can't at that point easily say, uh, my mother's not very well today because you're not answering my question. The focus is about where you're leaving from. So by using this concept of narrow focus and asking questions, the system can ask the user questions. They can answer it. And if they answer all of my questions, I'm ready to give them their price, their ticket, and, and move on to the next task. So, so goal direction is an extremely important concept for the next generation. Uh, and it takes away the complexity that a lot of people that do chatbots have had, which is um, you start with, how can I help you today? And you say, well, my mother's not very well. Do you know any doctors? Like you're, if, if you open the questions so wide, you're not doing what computers are best at, which is answering your question. So uh, the, the concept of next generation is to say, I don't care what your IT system is today, put us in front of it. We're going to look at the questions that you already ask, and then we're going to ask those questions for you. So if somebody starts going off topic and we just ask our next question, when do you want to leave? How long do you want to be away for? We have the answers that we need if to you answer, answer with the, the, the mother question. The system is going to say, "Yeah, nice, but again, where are you where are you living from?" <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so the more human you make it, but still get the job done, the better. Uh, and and I think if I had the choice, I would prefer the system to get the job done, even if it's not going to be chatty with me about the weather and how I feel and that type of thing. But you can always add that later. Uh, but, um, later. But, but but, but IT systems is- today. You have your conversational system, language-based and goal-based, so that, that the system will yes. have a goal with have that done, have the job done, and when, from where to where you wanna you wanna go. And there's going to be a feedback on okay, this is the chart on the on the in the world of how your flight is gonna look like. So you're pretty sure that the other per, that there is a, a handshake that everybody understood that. Right. Right. That's amazing. Uh, and, and even even the way an agent would speak to you, um, just, just compare it to today's system. When do you want to leave? And then it puts up a, a date for this month and you can toggle through December, January, February 23rd, what time, 5 p.m. That's not how people operate. What you want to say is, when do you want to leave? Next month. Great. All right. Because it, the, the, specif- the specificity, the, the details of the date don't matter yet. What you care about is when you want to go. If it's very specific, great. Tell me the date, you know, 5th of February. Okay, that's, or next month, I don't care. And then when you check for ticketing, that's the time you can see what's available. So, so we're, we're focusing on the user and letting the system do the hard work of the requirements. And, and, and the point I was going to make was uh, we, we teamed up with a company called Elemental Cognition to, mm-hmm. to do the reasoning part because we're, we're trying to make a really clear distinction between AI and NLP or language processing, language understanding. So we're focused on the language understanding bit, which is the interaction. But there's an AI piece, which is what do you, what do you want to say next? And um, elemental cognition, uh, you, you, uh, you, you're, yeah. David Ferrici um, yes. is the guy that uh, did the Jeopardy systems for IBM back in 2011. Uh, so yeah, the origin uh, so of he's Watson the guy that started. Right. So, so he was the founder of that that whole concept 
and uh, EC have just finished a big reasoning engine or had a year ago when we were working with them on this project to, to get it all going. Oh, so, right. so the AI piece, if you can solve the reasoning part with a tool like the EC tool, and then you've got the language understanding bit that, that's working right and you design it for goal direction, then that's a really good basis for the next generation of systems. That's, so, that's sorry if I'm that's sort of amazing. going going all over the place here. Yeah, no, no, but that's I believe that's uh, that's great for for our for me for our audience too to kind of understand uh, the kind of uh, uh, work and framework that you you guys are working. And um, I'm following you on Twitter and uh, Pat uh, on Twitter right. as well. You have great publications out there. And uh, one of the things that I see is like, and you can see that trend in the in in let's say in artificial intelligence today, which is many folks would say, well, artificial intelligence is essentially machine learning and in reality is deep learning and that's it. So, so just with using deep learning alone, we, we have it, we cracked the code and now we can build any intelligence that we want. And I see you guys kind of uh, saying, well, you know, does that work always? Uh, what about, uh, you know, having a more symbolic reasoning here, right? And using symbolic AI um, right? and uh, taking a look at, so what, what, what do you think about that? What is, what is the, uh, what, what, what are the limitations of using uh, what, I, what I call brute force machine learning? Yeah, well, uh, I've, I've been following the science for a long time and, uh, the, the types of things that deep learning, machine learning does extremely well, uh, you see it on the Amazon website, you know, you're, you're buying a few things, people that bought that also buy this, or you see it on, you know, the Disney channel, people that watch this also watch that. So, so it's really good at that correlation between the specifics of what somebody's just done, and then the options of what comes next. But with language, it doesn't seem to me to work very well, because um, I've, I've used the, you know, Siri and Alexa, and I can ask questions and I have a very close to 0% success rate in getting what I want. Uh, I find if I read the card for Alexa, which they send me every month, I can go, I can read it and it'll answer. Great. But I can never convert my language into the commands that these systems require. And, and the reason for that is because language isn't about commands. It's not about a, a string of words. It's actually about this interaction of embedded words all over the place. So um, the, the type of thing I want to ask my TV is, can you play the movie again I watched last week and have it interact with me that way? But there's an, there's an embedded element in that um, sentence that you can't get with a command. And, and if you think of it, if, if, I were to, um, if I were to say I want to buy something, that something can be like an, a very large number of items that, that um, a particular company has. But if I then qualify that with another sentence, like I want to buy something that I also bought last week, now that's a very complex issue. And, and the number of commands you'd have to enter would be exponentially large. And that, that's why you don't see chatbots working like people. And the solution to that is do what people do, which is in linguistics. So the, the science of language answers those questions. And, and we're not getting at, it today. Totally. If you look at Siri, Alexa, these, these guys, um, you ask a question, and when it gets to certain complexity is, at least that's what Alexa is telling me, uh, is like, hey, uh, Jordi, this is what I found about that on the internet. So basically it's using a traditional uh, web-based search engine like Google or, or whatever. That, that's what happens right. in, in, a, in, a, in a remarkably big percentage of user questions. Right. Right. Yes. Which is annoying if you're trying to <laughs> navigate somewhere and it's, so, that's its default escape. Exactly. It's going to say, okay, are you, are you telling me call mom or are you telling me to start Spotify? If not, it's not a command that I can react. I'm going to go Google because really I don't know what to do with it. That's, that's what we. Yeah. And, and look, search has, search has gone extremely well over the last 20 years. Uh, but the current tech that we see in, in chatbot technology is still search engine technology applied to a different problem. And, and I don't like it because it's not how language works. Nope. Uh, and and there's, there's no really good way to pivot from that as the tech giants that are developing these things because they almost have to start again. They've put so much research into this one particular strategy that's Absolutely. not getting results. Absolutely. And it, you know, I compare it to the epicycle model of astronomy. You know, you, you, keep, you keep tinkering around with your model, you know, where the, um, 
the, the sun is going around the earth and you keep modeling this, but it doesn't work. And then you put epicycles and epicycles and epicycles and it still doesn't work. And you then try and put more. So, so that to, to me, that's what's happening with some of these modern systems. They're tinkering around with it. It's working a little Trying bit better. It's still not right. little things, fixing a, a problem without realizing that, you know, uh, you know, thinking out of the box would be the way, the right way. Hey, um, a question for you. What, what is for you symbolic AI? Well, well, for me, the symbolic AI aligns with the brain theory that we, we recognize specific things with excruciating accuracy and the alternative. And, and um, uh, you know, if you if you look at what what's being discussed, there's things like causality where um, cer certain things result from others. And it's language is infused in that that type of thing. So language is infused in the symbolic concept. Um, the alternative of statistical or brute force systems it doesn't have the accuracy and precision that you need for language. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, again, I'm, I'm focused on the language piece, not the whole AI piece. Yeah. And you, you would see, you know, out there, you see some news, right? And in, uh, in the press that says, oh, now this and that algorithm is uh, now has the, the understanding capacity of a higher school student. It's like, no, <laughs> what, what do you think about that? <laughs> uh, look, the, uh, um, part of it is the media trying to create an interesting story. Like, it's great to think that these machines are much smarter than people, but the reality is, um, in fact, um, there was a great headline which said, um, maybe we can't build super intelligent machines, but let's let the machines design it. Well, <laughs> the machines don't design anything. <laughs> it's people designing the machines to do something, not the other way around. Um, and, and the machines certainly aren't intelligent in the way you and I are intelligent. They don't, they don't have language. They don't, they, they don't have memories like we have. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. um, so, so, so if we would um, so, have a so better... when I look at yeah, sorry, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so, so so when I look at um, some of the other headlines like um, GPT three or there's a, a new version of some type of language model and it now has twelve billion parameters and you think, well, what's a parameter and who cares? And, and then if you compare it to what language requires, it's not you know ten to the twelve or something combinations. Language is infinite. And I, I did an analysis that showed for the motion in English. So I moved from A to B towards C. When, when you do the analysis of that, I got 10 to the 3,000 combinations. So if you're telling me that 10 to the 12 is this amazing result, and I'm then telling you that you need 10 to the 3,000 just to do motion, there's something fundamentally broken in the way people are presenting their findings because they haven't solved the problem at all. They've just solved this very exactly. small thing. Exactly. And probably you, you know uh, Gary Marcus, right? And uh, has this sure, brilliant, yeah, Gary. brilliant, yeah. Yeah, this brilliant book, uh, uh, Rebooting AI. And, uh, and now uh, he goes out there and say, hey, you know, some, some exam. Oh, look at that. That's the guy. Exactly. <laughs> great book. Uh, great, great theory. Yes. And uh, I think he's a, uh, he's a, uh, you know, we look at this uh, algorithm, GPT-3 and all that. It's like, oh, well, it's like uh, ruining the party, right? All the time. It's like, no, he's <laughs> not like a higher schooler, uh, um, intelligent guy is uh, not even understanding anything, right? That's, that's what, because they, they miss this, uh, this uh, symbolic or this uh, or this atom capacity to, to understand what they say, what it means, what 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 you say. Yeah, and, and it's kind of annoying that some of the the luminaries in the field are exaggerating the capability of the system. You know, um, uh, you know, Jeff uh, Jeff Hinton, for example, said that by by now there would be no need for radiologists because it could all be automated, and and it wasn't true. And it's it's not been true, and yet a lot of people were confused by that for five or ten years because they were waiting for this machine to take over. Um, and, and I think recently Andrew Ng said, "Well, it, you know, um, it was it was interesting, but we thought it would work because we did it all at this one particular Stanford medical facility. But then we went to another one nearby, and then it didn't work at all. You know, who would have known?" And and my my, my point for scientists is don't make an outrageous claim. If you haven't actually done all of that first, because it's not good for the rest of the science, because so many people are following these guys, uh, and so much um, oxygen is taken up by uh, that type of claim. Absolutely, one of my favorite movies is uh, this Space Two Thousand One Space Odyssey, right? Which right. was uh, recorded yes. in nineteen sixty-eight, something like that. And you see this uh, computer, right? Uh, HAL Nine Thousand, which is very intelligent and a bad guy, admittedly. 
And uh, but the guy is able to understand humans, uh, talk to them, uh, read leaps, uh, play chess, and 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 uh, drive this uh, this big this, this big uh, starship and whatnot. And then I, I use this example because that's how in 1967 folks imagined artificial intelligence would be in 2001. And what we had in 2001 was Microsoft Clip. That, that was yes, the paper clip. <laughs> <laughs> like okay, that, that was it. So um, the on on one hand is like we are, you know, this 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 is speeding, right? We the 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 exponential um, innovation. That's we are all thrilled by that. But at the same time, when it comes to AI, it's like well, some of this have there. There's been sometimes a big over promising in over there so between these two visions on you know let's see we are not over promising but at the same time you know there is obvious progress and, and all that what is your your vision on on artificial intelligence where where, where are we what what are we going to get when okay well C committing to a date's always difficult because you, <laughs> you you basically need to have a lot of people following and then uh, implementing innovations. But what what it what it will look like in the future is the things which we've already proven with pattern theory um, actually work. So we we've shown in the lab that uh, when you're recognizing sentences, we can keep track of its meaning independently to the language, and we can then take that uh, meaning and answer questions about it. Um, so the a, a lot of the challenges have already been solved. Uh, the, and, and in theory, the interesting part with the language is that if you do what people were talking about in the 50s and 60s, which is you start to store books in this meaning-based representation, and then you use the lang a language um, generator for the, the language you're interested in to then convert it to your language, you suddenly make the world a much smaller place because the, all of the world's information is being stored in a common way and everybody has access to the same thing. Um, Google was talking about that in 2000. They, they've, got, they've got a translator, but today nobody can rely on that translation to be accurate. So um, until you go and fix the linguistic model that underpins the Google system, then you're always going to have problems. Um, the, uh, and in terms of why we haven't made progress, uh, if, if you go back to the 1960s, um, people were very focused on you need to recognize the grammar of language and the grammar is built on parts of speech. And the thing that we've shown is that you don't need parts of speech at all because that's highly ambiguous. You know, single sentences can be unsolvable with parts of speech, but if you use the meaning of the words in a particular language, you can have the meaning always being the same for all of the world's languages. Uh, and Roland Reference Grammar, which is the, the book I came across in uh, 2012. So that's um, Robert Van Valen's, one of his students' books. Um, it actually answers all these questions about how the world's languages work. So, so I was worried about how English works. And um, these guys in this ROG community can explain how all of these different languages work and yet map, map to the same thing. And, and in fact, that I don't know if you can see that book. Uh, it's not coming across. No. Anyway, it's Emma Pavey's book <laughs> called uh, The Structure of Language. And that was the book I found in a bookshop. Oh, oh, you're yeah, on mute. Sorry, I was muted. Oh. Yes, uh, I think this is the artificial intelligence <laughs> of uh, Zoom kind of saying, no, that's a background. No, that's that's foreground. No, wait, <laughs> that's, that's, a <laughs> that's an example. It's like you put the book and then the AI of, believe we are using this this uh, Zoom software, it gets all confused. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> but that's a great book. Um, yes, yeah, so, so I, I, I found it amazing that um, at that point, I've been studying for like 25 years. And then I found this book, which answered all the questions that I've been thinking I had to do myself. That, and they're, they're hard problems. And yet we're not teaching the, the modern generation of students how meaning works and how conversations work, which these guys understand in depth. Instead, we teach them maybe statistics or, or you don't even need to understand the meaning of words because you can use this and you know what, what, whatever the mumbo jumbo words are to dis discuss what the language is about, um, and it, it's a shame. Yes. And, and so by converting people to learn what they need to do 
Absolutely. in order to manipulate language will be much better off for the next generation. And, and that's why I, I don't pick on a, a particular date for big breakthroughs, but we, we already have things working that Fair enough. can just Fair be enough. extended. Fair enough. And uh, if uh, every time I am being asked the same question, I never say date either because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the use right. case that you, 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 you told us about, about this uh, ticketing system, for for a lenses is amazing and i got a question for you is how do you how do you think ai and these advances in in, in pattern and atom uh, and pattern uh, recognizing yep. is gonna is gonna uh, improve uh, customer service in the future uh, well today customer service tends to be this this tiered model where You'll, you'll call up, they'll try to have some automation to help you. Maybe there's a chatbot to help you. When that doesn't help, you go to a person and then potentially you can go to an expert. Um, and that's that's the hierarchy. I, I think we can answer a lot of questions more quickly before we go to the um, to the humans. Um, there's another thing which we, we also learned through this uh, ticketing system, which is um, pe people are good at the, the language part, but they're not good at the systems part. So if you can automate the system, so this reasoning engine I described, by simply hitting the reasoning engine with, here's the information I've got, it can give you an answer. And so that's better than per a person. And the interaction with the language and seeing what you want is better than having to wait for a person to become available. So we, we think that's going to be a big improvement in customer service. Absolutely. So, and that, that's, you know, I'll, I'll use my buzzword again, the next generation systems where you simply front end an existing IT system with language and multimodality is going to be a, a good step forward. Totally, totally, absolutely. John, I, I would be talking uh, with you about that for 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 hours, but uh, I need uh, I need to, uh, there is some some uh, limitations on uh, how long this this podcast is going to be here uh, can be, but um, our audience will want to see how they can okay, get in touch with you. How is there any way to right. they, you can they can contact you? They they can learn about you. Uh, so what would be the best the best way for for them to to get in touch? Well, uh, a couple of ways. Pro probably the easiest way is contact our CEO, Beth at pat.ai. Um, I probably shouldn't give her name across the airwaves like this, but I, but um, she she's you can uh, say as many names as you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the other thing is we've got a Discord server so people can interact about the, the technology and the the solutions that we built, uh, and we've got a website. Uh, pat.ai so you can also go there and uh, um, initiate a contact through that so yeah we're very happy to talk to people about what we're working on um, so Amazing. feel free to Amazing. contact us awesome so listen guys uh, the audience pat.ai you can go there you will you will see that the, the amazing things that the, these guys are building the work of john uh, that does all these uh, amazing uh, uh, technologies that we are all, all working here to make uh, the world a better place, or at least more intel where machines are more intelligent. Uh, and they, they need it, I can tell you that. All right, John, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you, Jordi, it's been a pleasure. It's uh, nice to talk to somebody that knows so much. Oh no, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just learning. You are, you are the expert, and uh, thank you so much. <laughs> I have learned so much today. It's been, it's been amazing. All right, thank My you so pleasure. much. Hope to talk um, to you again. Absolutely, thank you. <laughs>